Im Hier und Jetzt beschäftigt sie sich für soziale Fragen und ist Mitglied in verschiedenen NGOs. Als starke Verfechterin der projektbasierten Pädagogik war sie tätig als unabhängige Entwicklerin sowie als Professorin für Computerprogrammierung, Direktorin der ja. Webakademie des Samsung Campus und der Coding Academy von Epitech. Im Jahr 2016 gründete sie Female Ambition, einen der ersten Kurse in der IT-Entwicklung, der zu 80 Prozent aus Frauen bestand. Sie ist außerdem Direktorin von Jamais Sansel, einer NGO mit Fokus auf Gender Diversity und seit 2018 nun die Geschäftsführerin der L'École 42, einer revolutionären Programmierschule, die neben Coding auch Qualitäten wie Ethik, kritisches Denken, Kreativität und dem so wichtigen Einfühlungsvermögen vermittelt. Heute spricht sie über Training Revolution, The Example of 42, Fragen sind zu diesem Beitrag leider nicht möglich. Natürlich können Sie sich trotzdem innerhalb des Chats miteinander zu diesem Vortrag unterhalten. Nous accueillons chaleureusement Sophie Vigie. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm very happy uh, to be here with you. And uh, sorry, my English is not very good, but I hope you will understand uh, everything. So um, let's go to the presentation. I hope everybody sees the presentation. So I'm Sophie Vigé. I am the managing director of 42, and I'm going to introduce you to 42 and our training revolution. But um, first, let's have a look at to the history. So schooling and the industrial revolution. So there is a strong link between schooling and the concept of terrorism. You can see a standardization of the students because they, they learn exactly the same thing at the same time, in the same way, and at the same pace. Um, also, I don't know who thought that would be a good idea to learn by sitting and listening to someone all day long, but this is clearly not consistent with the last and the most recent neuroscientific studies about how we learn and how our brain works. Uh, this kind of pedagogy is a passive learning. That means it's a top-down learning and the input comes from only one source. Here is a funny quote of Einstein. So I give you a moment to, to read it. And in fact, you can see that in this kind of pedagogical model, um, it doesn't allow each student to develop their own potential and also their own strengths. And um, also it could uh, squash and crush the self-esteem of each student and also the self-motivation. But that was the story. So what about now? So now uh, we are in the fourth industrial revolution, also called a digital transformation. And uh, we've seen the emergence of new business models like Uber, like BlaBlaCar, like Amazon. And it really impacts all sectors, uh, such as health, but also banking or law or education. And uh, also, well, first, uh, we, we see a rapid job transformation. I'm sure you know uh, that the autonomous car is replacing taxis and uh, also uh, automatic checkout uh, are replacing cashiers. In fact, in uh, some studies, um, it shows that 85% of the jobs in 2030 don't exist yet. So that's the first point. And the second point is uh, there is a lack of digital talent everywhere in the world. Just for Europe, 700,000 jobs will not be filled by 2021. And it's something around 200,000 just for France. So that's really why our education must adapt to provide training for these new models and trades. But what kind of new training model? Well, first, we all know there is a new situation, access to knowledge. 
because now uh, everybody can access from anywhere to knowledge through the internet. So there is no need for transmission. This is not the same situation. And what we really need to teach to our students, and this is very important, is to find the information. They are not in the same situation than before with someone who teach them, who is the only one to have the, the, the knowledge. And we really need to teach them to research, to do research, to check the information and also to sort the information. And that really helped to avoid a world of fake news. Also, um, in school, in the traditional pedagogical model, skills which are prioritized or promoted are memorization and calculation. And those skills uh, have really a low added value because guess what? Our well, computers are really, really much better than us to the skills. So, what kind of skills do we need for the 21st century? Well, we need skills specific to human beings, such as creativity, or collaboration, or empathy, communication, critical thinking, problem solving, and adaptability. To be able to adapt, to be agile, to be creative, to be able to face the unknown. So we really need to change the training model. And that's why our response is 42. So 42 was founded in 2013 by uh, Xavier Niel, which, uh, who is a French uh, tycoon, very well known in France. And um, the first idea uh, was to have no degree requirement because we really think there is no need for a diploma to start coding. And uh, we have a lot of people in 42 who've dropped out of school or who have no degree. And uh, who are, we are, um, um, they are very talented people uh, in code. So that was the first idea. And the second idea is um, the idea of a social elevator doesn't work or doesn't exist anymore. And that was clearly shown by the last PISA report, and uh, especially for France, uh, because there is a strong link between uh, your social background and your capacity to reach higher education. That's why we decided to address these inequalities and we decided to be completely tuition free and there is no fees or hidden cost. And so that helps to give everyone a chance. Also, um, uh, one year and a half ago, uh, something like that, we uh, get rid of the age limit because before the age limit was 30 years old, but because of the new situation, because of the rapid job transformation, we really wanted to be able also to retrain people uh, who works in some uh, in some domain where there is no job anymore, or, um, and to be able to retrain them. So, because we are one of the best IT schools in the world, uh, according to the last uh, championship coding game, and um, because we are completely free, we have no degree requirement, we have no age limit, uh, you can assume that uh, we have a lot of applicants. And uh, just for this year in France, just for Paris, we had 30,000 uh, applicants just for Paris. So we needed a very strong selection process a one not based on uh, usual social uh, criteria. And uh, we wanted to have a process based only on uh, potential and on motivation. So that's why we've created uh, the piscine. So piscine means swimming pool in French. And the idea is the immersion. It's, the idea is if you want to learn how to swim, well, the best thing to do is to go in a swimming pool. So that's why we created the piscine. So it involves four weeks uh, of immersion in 42. And it's really four weeks. I mean, it's every day, including weekends. And um, during these four weeks, uh, candidates will learn to program uh, in C. Well, this is not a very often used uh, programming language, but 
this is really the basis of all programming language. You really understand um, how the, the programming language works and also how the uh, memory allocation uh, works. So it really allows all the candidates to adapt uh, to all other programming languages after that. And at the end of the piscine, we keep only one third of, uh, of candidates. So, um, also uh, during the piscine, all the candidates uh, will uh, try our training approach, which is a very special one and very powerful training approach, and it's called peer learning. In peer learning, there is no lesson there is no teacher and there is no MOOC. So you are maybe asking yourself, so what do the students do or uh, how they, they learn? Well, our job was to create a very strong and very powerful uh, intranet where students can find a series of projects and series of problems of uh, increasing difficulty. So because there is no teacher, there is no MOOC, there is nothing like that. So maybe you are you're asking yourself, so how do they solve the problem? Well, because they are all together, uh, the first thing to do is to discuss with the other candidates and to help each other and to try some pieces of code to debate about them, to make mistake, mistake and sure, and to try again. And obviously, uh, they can read manuals, they can also watch videos, and they can also do research on forums. So that means um, that um, each student will create their own framework of learning. And this is not the same uh, for each student. And also, um, look at this picture, it's like, it's like if it was a forest. And um, the idea is if you have to reach the target, and if there is a teacher, if the teacher shows you how to get to the, how to reach the target, so you can assume that all the students will take exactly the same path. Not only because a uh, human can be lazy, but it's because if the teacher shows you how to do it, you will do it because you think this is the right way to do it. But if there is no teacher, and if you have to try to find the solution by your own, you may be surprised and you may have as many solutions as there are students. So that this kind of pedagogy really helps also with uh, innovation. Also, something very special is um, the approach uh, to, the, to others. I mean, when you were at school, um, uh, working with someone else was called uh, chatting or even sometimes cheating. But here, uh, the other become an ally and uh, it really helps with uh, collective intelligence and uh, collaboration, communication, because you have to work with uh, uh, the others, uh, with creativity, resourcefulness, and also adaptability, critical thinking, and also self-confidence. So also working uh, with people of different cultures and social backgrounds really provides a, a wider view and helps to find new uh, solutions. And all of this promote really a better problem solving. Also, the 42 students really understand that diversity is an asset. Um, clearly, I've never seen as much diversity as in 42. There are really people coming from uh, all over the world, from uh, all the ages, or all, all the religion, and uh, all the social background. And um, it really comes with a very, very nice spirit of, uh, of um, respect and, uh, and solidarity. Um, also, maybe you can ask, okay, okay, but if there is no teacher, so who corrects the students? Well, they correct each other. That means um, our job was to create for each project or each problem, we've created a ladder. So even if you don't know how to code, uh, you will be able to correct uh, the project just to check if these features or, or these features works. And so you can put two points or two points and you have a mark, a total mark at the end. 
So, um, so everybody is able to correct someone to correct a project. But the most relevant part is that um, when you correct someone, you can go inside the code uh, and, and you can discuss with the, uh, the other students so how uh, he solved the problem and how he did it. And so that's a very, very uh, efficient uh, time of learning. Also, uh, in the human brain, we have a special area that um, when you explain something to someone, you really understand it really better. And also, uh, when the students start, they have uh, five points uh, of correction. And so each time they correct someone, they earn one point. And each time they have to be corrected, they lose, they pay one point. So uh, we have a good balance and everybody uh, have to correct everybody. Also, for one project, we have five corrections uh, to have the, a good average. So this is 100% practical. This is 100% project-based, and this is 100% collaboration. So this is exactly what uh, all the students will find uh, in companies. And you can recognize a 42 uh, campus uh, by uh, the huge open space and a forest of uh, IMAX uh, and uh, sometimes PCs. And it really helps this huge open space uh, to, um, to um, the students to work all together. And uh, also, we provide a very nice spaces uh, to spend time in. Um, also, to help um, to involve the student in the curriculum, uh, we use the gamification. And uh, you can just look around you, all the mammals uh, use the game to, to learn things. So when the students start, they are level zero. And like in a video game, they can go up to level 21 by earning some experience points. And they earn experience points each time uh, they succeed in a project. Also, we have some achievements. Some are very fun, uh, like you can try to hack 42. And we have also uh, houses. So when you start, you are in the houses. So we have the order, the alliance, the federation, and the assembly. And uh, we organize a competition um, championship uh, between the houses. And um, once a year, uh, we also organize a very, very big and uh, a nice party at the winning houses color. So, um, it really encourages collaboration and team spirit, but also um, it uh, legitimates the try and fail approach. I mean, when you buy uh, when you you buy a video game, uh, uh, you know that you are if it's a really boring game. <laughs> no, but when you buy a video game, you know that you you won't um, uh, succeed in the in the in the in the game. At the first uh, at the first time, so you have to try the level one and try again, and then after that you succeed and you can go up to the level uh, two. So it removes the stigma of failure, and um, the students understand that failure is a step towards success. So they can try, fail, learn, and then try again, and then succeed. Also, um, we manage a, a pace for everyone. So look at this. This is the holy graph. This is a play on world, like a, a, a holy graal. This is holy graph. And uh, so it looks like a, a solar system, something like that. So each circle, you can see each circle is a project. And when you start, when the students start after they succeed uh, in the P scene, so they start at the first circle and uh, they can subscribe to the first project. And when they succeed uh, the first project, so it unlocks the next circle when you can find three new uh, projects. There is also some projects that you can see, um, they are like rectangle, so they are not projects. 
because we really need to, um, to be uh, sure that our students have the, have the skills. Um, uh, and so there are exams. So the exam, uh, the students have to face a series of algorithm problems and they are alone. They are not allowed to speak with someone or to have a phone and they have no internet connection. And so they have to, to solve all the algorithm uh, uh, problem. Um, <clears throat> so when they finish all the seventh uh, circle, so all of this until the last circle uh, are the common core. So the common core is exactly the same in all the 42 campuses. <clears throat> in the common core, you can see algorithm, uh, object-oriented programming, and also uh, network, DevOps, <coughs> sorry, and, um, and a big web project. So at the end, uh, the students can, can access to all the specialization. Uh, and in the specialization, you can find AI, uh, uh, deep learning, machine learning, web development, mobile development, cybersecurity, and uh, everything, uh, a lot of things. And uh, they can also start a first internship they can also start a, a part-time job or full-time job. They can also start their own project. Uh, we have a lot of students who, uh, who um, develop their own project and start their startup. And they can also apply to go in another 42 campus. So here you can see the specialization. So that means the curriculum is adapted to all situations and all profiles. We have some students who have a part-time job or who have to take care uh, of their kids or parents or something like that. And to go to the level 21, some of the students take one year and a half and others take uh, six years. And all of this, this, this pedagogical model really respects uh, the instinctive way of learning. It respects how the human brain works. Just have a look at um, the things that the human uh, have always uh, 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 willing to, to learn that. The first thing is uh, the babies, the babies want to learn how to walk. And after that, they want to learn how to speak. And after that, they want to understand the world around them. And when they want to walk, it's a really a self-motivated learning. I mean, there is nobody who says, OK, today is the day uh, you have to learn how to walk. And also, they don't walk at the same pace, and they don't walk uh, uh, the same way. And something very special is uh, when a baby falls down, you never see parents uh, telling, oh, it's a mistake, uh, what you've done, you'll never be able, to, be able to walk or something like that. So I don't know why it starts with school, but uh, clearly, as I said, this is really not consistent with the most recent uh, neuroscientific studies about how we learn. And also the last thing, code is a language, and uh, you've all learned your mother tongue by immersion. So you can do the same thing also with code. So what are the results? Well, first we have 4,000 students at 42 Paris uh, with 69 different nationalities. And something very interesting, 35% of our students have no diploma. So that means we we can um, uh, we have a lot of students coming from a disadvantaged uh, social background. Also, at the last PC, we had 30% of women, uh, which is very good compared to all the uh, IT schools in France. And 12% of our students uh, create their own startup. But the most interesting part is that the 100 of our students are hired. And so what uh, do they do after 42? So uh, first, they have a very good uh, annual average salary. This one is a very good one uh, in France. Also, uh, most of them are in full-time permanent employment. And uh, they work as much in large companies as uh, in small companies or uh, in startups. And they also work uh, in uh, advisory, service, audit consulting, and um, web and mobile, or security and telecoms. 
Uh, also, uh, just uh, two years ago, we started to launch uh, our international network. And um, we, we, we have requests coming from all over the world. I mean, really all the countries uh, are asking us for 42 campus. And I think uh, it comes uh, because um, it, there is three reasons. I mean, the first one is um, there is a lack of digital talent everywhere in the world. And we really are recognized to uh, provide a very good <clears throat> developer, very good coder, very talented people. So that's the first reason, I think. The second one is we, we provide a really easily scalable system because there is no teacher, so you can grow and uh, and go from 150 students and grow to 400 students um, without uh, having a lot of teachers, so there is no cost of teachers, so uh, this is a not expensive solution. And also something very interesting is um, because we have a, a training approach, very special one, and uh, <clears throat> we can address also uh different uh, people like atypical people and also all the dropout profiles all the people who didn't find their place in the usual system and um, so now um we have two campuses in france uh one in paris one in lyon we have one campuses uh, one campus sorry in the silicon valley um, one in Spain, uh, in Madrid, uh, two in Russia, uh, not with the 42 brand, but it's the 42 network. Uh, they are called uh, School 21, one in Moscow, one in Kazan. We have one company in Finland, uh, Hive, one in the Netherlands, Kodam, and uh, one in Belgium, uh, called 19. Also two campuses in Morocco, in Ben Gerir and Kourikba. And the call is called uh, uh, 1337. We have one campus 42 in Japan, 42 Tokyo, and one campus 42 in South Korea, 42 Seoul, and one in Brazil, 42 Sao Paulo. And uh, opening in 2020 and in 2021, uh, we will have two new campuses in France, a new one in Brazil, one in Armenia, it's just open now, one in Canada, one in Italy, uh, one in uh, Jordan, one in Portugal, one in Malaysia, uh, it will open in two months, one in Thailand, one in Australia, also another one in United Arab Emirates, uh, two uh, in Germany, uh, like in uh, three months, uh, one in Wolfsburg and one in Heilbronn, and I hope one in Berlin in one year, something like that. And also we will have four new campuses in Spain and a new one in Switzerland in six months. So what are the key figures? Well, uh, we have uh, uh, 33 partner campuses in 2021 uh, in 22 uh, uh, different countries. And we have now uh, 10,000 students um, we will have uh, 15,000 students in 2021 and uh, 25,000 students in 2022. Thank you, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and uh, I wish you uh, a very nice uh, day and uh, uh, a very nice event.